Hi everyone, welcome back to another tutorial from Rooms of Wonder. We have been doing a few images on this um, page um, of wizarding items and I thought this sort of magical quill would be a fun picture to do today. It is quite small and detailed but I think that with polychromos I can manage that and if you have any brand of pencil that you can sharpen to a nice fine point that keeps its point for a while and doesn't snap then that would be ideal for this sort of picture. Now we have a little um, ink um, jar here, ink well I should say. Now you could draw it so that the ink is like indigo, indigo ink being quite typical black or maybe a dark blue but I thought we would make this a little bit more magical and we would um, maybe have a mixture of colours in the ink. I thought it might be fun. So that's what I'm going to try, <laughs> try to do. And I thought we've got a lot of pink and purple on the page already, which I always think is quite magical. We'll try something a little bit different for the ink. I thought let's try an orange, a red and a yellow and mix those together a little bit. Um, I'm just grabbing whoops, some pencils that we can try this with. Hmm. I've got three here. I've got red and orange and yellow. Now, I want them to be quite sharp. Um, just sharpening my first one. This is the Pale Geranium Lakes. It's not a really dark red. Oops, you can't really see it, but that's the best I can do. I'm sorry about how dark this page is. It's, I've had to shut the blind because the sun is coming through. And uh, for some reason, it looks a bit dark. I might try and edit the video and make it brighter. I got that facility. I don't try it very often. So I'm going to put a few little red areas. So a dark area there and then just spread it out a little bit so that it can blend into whatever colour we do next to it like that. And then maybe one here. I'm going to keep these areas quite small because it's a very small little inkwell. I don't know why the red looks a bit nasty for ink. My husband's got this absolutely gorgeous ink. He went through a little stage where he really liked using ink for art pieces. And um, it's, I think it's called Dragon's Blood. And it's from Colt Pens. And it is red ink with gold glitter through it. Oh, it's just gorgeous. What he's going to use it for, I've got no idea. This is the um, Cadmium Orange, which I'm going to use. Oh, I does not want to... I think that's the best we're going to get. Um, and I'm going to just do... I'm going to put a bit next to this one, like that, and then just fade it down a bit. And then I'm going to put a bit at the top here. It's just quite random, there's no reason. I'm just trying to spread them out evenly-ish, but randomly at the same time. That makes no sense. <laughs> but you know me, I don't, I don't try make sense. This is the cadmium yellow. It's a nice bright yellow. I'm just going to fill in the gaps like that and it's a sort of it just looks a bit different you know it's magical now what color should we do the feather i wonder let's finish the glass <coughs> excuse me i've got a frog in my throat i tell you why i've just eaten a big piece of chocolate I'm not going to use cold grey 3 actually, I think I'm going to use a darker, maybe cold grey 4. You'll have to believe me this is cold grey 4. The sun's gone in and it looks a bit brighter, I don't know. Anyway, so for glass, it's not the easiest of um, things to colour. You can make the glass coloured and then that's a bit easier, but we're doing it in... What I'm going to do is put a little dark patch here and just gently spread it. And then the same here going to go over the quill. Um, I'm going to do some dark and some light areas on here. This bit I'm going to lighten to the middle just like we did with the top and it sort of hopefully makes it look a bit shiny. And then I'm just going to put a bit of dark on the corners and leave a bit of white as well so it sort of looks like shine. Now one little trick and um, we did it in um, we did on a different bit is use some white pencil. I've got white pencil here. This is the polychromos white. It's not the best white in the world. But we'll try it anyway. And I'm going to go just around the edge of here. I'm going to try and just whiten down the uh, black line there. 
to sort of give us the illusion that we're looking at it through something. Now it's really, um, I can see that it's working, but it's, you know, and I'm going to do it on the quill as well. So any lines that are within the glass to make them look a bit pale as if they're sort of we're looking through. It's just a tiny, tiny touch that can make a little bit of a difference. Now we've just got to try and colour our quill and we've just gone over it in white. Yay. <laughs> now for the centre of the quill um, feather, I would normally use a brownie grey. So one of the more warm greys. So I'm going to grab this one. This is warm grey 5. Um, oh. I, it's not going to show up. Or oh, maybe there. I just remembered I'm expecting a delivery. I think it's coming. It's supposed to be coming before one o'clock and it's 20 to one. So my doorbell could ring at any minute. I just heard a vehicle outside, which is what reminded me. It's uh, four chairs for my kitchen, my kitchen table. The table isn't here yet. It's on order. So I've left it whiter in the middle just to make it look a bit shiny because I've used a darker tone it looks very different to the glass which is really what I wanted to achieve. Now the feather itself, <clears throat> now the feather we did on the witch's hat picture we did with just a couple of shades of green. Um, what should we do with this one? I don't want to do green again because we've done green but it would go quite nicely I think with our ink. We could keep to those ink colours but I think, uh, no, let's have a think. Maybe, hmm, we would do, we could do some browns, greens, where I said not green, let's do blue, let's do a nice blue, um, I like this blue, so we're going to start with this blue, this is the cobalt turquoise, and we're going to do the darker areas of the feather, now you may have seen me do feathers before, it's going to be very similar, so I'm going to do a dark bit here, and then just fade a bit and a dark bit here and fade and we're going to do a second colour in a in a bit okay and the same on these they're quite small but there's only a few little ones and then we get onto the larger area now there is a pattern drawn on this feather I'm going to ignore it sorry Johanna but it will show through so my plan is to make this all dark along the central piece like that and then just fade it out just the same as we did on those smaller pieces it's so sunny now my, my son left for college he left about quarter to twelve it was sunny but it was absolutely chocking it was rain <laughs> I don't know if there was a rainbow I didn't actually look out it's such um, funny weather today so I really want to make sure it's quite dark in there, and I haven't been. I just layer over it until it's dark enough. You'll see why it's important later, I hope, if it works. So that's that layer. Now I'm going to go to the outside of the feather here and put a dark layer and fade it inwards. So to get it dark on the edge, just layer it over a few more times, like that. I'm not sure how well this matches the ink, but maybe that makes it more magical. <laughs> it's a good excuse, isn't it? Oh, it's magic, it can be any colour. Oh, the sun's just gone in. Wow. I have got a blackout blind and it's still making such a huge difference. It's quite strange. I don't know how much that is picking up on the film, on the camera. But uh, my eyes are noticing, that's for sure. But uh, anyway, it's the best I can do. Um, there we go. Now this side of the feather is a bit smaller than this side, thinner, narrower. So even though our bit is almost the same size, although that one is a little bit shorter, we've got a lot less white, but we can deal with that okay. <clears throat> we grab our second colour, which is our cobalt green. Whoops, now are you going to be able to see this in this light? What if I do that? Well, that's better. There you go. 
Um, we used these colours in our cauldron potion, didn't we? It's, um, now we're going to take the colour towards the middle, but I want to leave a little bit of white. So I'm going to start where I faded the other colour, go over the top of that and then just put a gentle stroke towards the centre and leave, as I say, that little bit of white in the middle. And here the same. So we just go over what's there and just extend it. Now this one has got quite a wide, wide gap so I'm going to extend that a fair bit more than on the other side. I'm not going to use any extra colours, we're just going to make this stripe a bit longer. So here we can bring that out quite a bit. And just keep going all the way along. This is such a fun page. So when I saw this page, I knew this was going to be one of the first pages I did. I was actually going to plan on it being my first page. But then when I did the flip through, I thought, well, I've got to sort of complete something. So I don't want to do one of these items. Because then if I make it into a compilation video for my members, it'll have a flip through on the front. and Or if I cut the flip through off, it might be, not really work. So I uh, I didn't do it like that. Now, now, and also I did the the um, wizard's room because I'd been asked to, so I did that one. Now our stars and dots and bits and pieces, I think we should do it in the ink colours. I know there's going to be a bit of a clash going on, but that's okay with me. If you're not happy with those colours, do your own colours. You know, the ink, if you did the ink in a green, in a bluey green, I think it would work really well, to be fair. So the Pale Geranium Lake, I'm going to do, hmm, what am I going to do? I'm going to do all the stars in Pale Geranium Lake. Now I'm struggling to see these a little bit. What I could really do with, I think, is a book under here, because and then it wouldn't keep bouncing up and down. I'll do that before the next video. If you get another Johanna Basford book and just pop it underneath, it supports the thin page. Okay, so that's our red. I'm going to grab the orange. Whoops! Or oh, drop the orange. This is the cadmium orange that we used before. Again, you struggle to see. And I'm going to do these little flourishes. Now, there's a tiny circle there and some dots and dashes. I'm just going to do that sort of thing, just to bring attention to them. I don't really know how else to colour them. Like that. So I've got a few little orangey magical bits. And then with my cadmium yellow, I'm just going to do a bit of a background really light all around maybe just around the feather well no because we need to incorporate these stars and things all the way around just to sort of do a magical hue glow yellow is quite good especially a pale one for doing something like this because you can fade it into the background a bit more easily because it's already quite pale and whitish so I'm just going to go around a bit I'm not going to go too far down the uh, this because I think the magic is coming out of the pot and into the feather. I don't know. That's what I think. <laughs> I'm just going to try and make sure I've got it in all areas. So it's the problem with this advantage and disadvantage to yellow. Advantages are you can't see where you've missed, so it doesn't matter too much. But the disadvantages are you can't see where you missed. And when someone's watching your colouring video on a big, huge, widescreen telly, they're going to see. <laughs> but I've done my best there. And there is our magical feather. So that was great fun. Um, it wasn't too long, um, but that's the advantage with these lovely small victory pictures. You can do them quite quickly and you can still get a rather nice result, I think, and even pop in a little bit of background and it still doesn't take you very long. But for now, thank you for watching. Um, I am going to do um, all of the ones on this page at some point. I can't say for sure exactly when they come out, though. But uh, if you subscribe, you'll get notifications when my videos come out and you'll be able to check and see when the next one comes along if you want to 
have a get, have a look at it. But for now, thank you so much for watching and happy colouring. <laughs>